Welcome to the Mischief. Once again, you have joined Tomes and Tales on the Mischief of Mice channel, where a group of friends get together and discuss some graphic novels that they have uh, chosen themselves. And that's about it. So, this time, as you can see, we have Pride of Baghdad, written by Brian K. Vaughn, and uh, the art is done by Nico Henrichon? Henrichon? I'm not really sure on that one. But uh, this was chosen by, and I will start doing some introductions at the same time, Lilac SC here. Hello. And then we have Callisto. Hi. And we've got Kashka. Hello. And then we've got myself, Alan. Hi, everybody. So I'm going to pass this off to Lilac SC, who was the one that chose this book. Okay. I don't have a big summary for this one, but um, I think the the back the summary on the back actually pretty explains it pretty well. So it says in April of 2003, a pride of lions escaped from the Baghdad Zoo during the American bombing raid. Lost and confused, hungry but finally free, the four lions roamed the decimated streets of Baghdad in desperate struggle for their lives. So this uh, pride of Baghdad, um, I think, is all uh, like a Pride of Lions in Baghdad, uh, basically from the viewpoint of the lions when the bombing raid occurs. Okay? okay? And I guess I'll start a little bit. I was surprised by how close, or how often I thought of the Lion King while looking at the illustration. <laughs> <laughs> so it has, I'll, I'll show. Um, Oh, this is this is pretty much the family, the pride. Um, so you can see that you got a little cub, and then um, a male, and two females. And one of the females is an uh, older, kind of wizened one that actually, I believe, is from Africa, like she was born there and then brought into captivity, where the others obviously weren't. Um, <laughs> So anyway, that's the pride, and every time I'd see the little uh, little cub, I'd always think of Simba from um, Lion King. But anyways. I agree, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I guess uh, first thing, what did you think of the um, point of view from, like this was a very realistic sort of setting. Um, yeah, and the point of view from animals living in what would kind of be modern times right now, like reality. What did you think of that kind of point of view? And I guess I can start. Um, I, tend, I tend to anthropomorphize things anyway, but <laughs> just the the um, dynamic between the prey animals and the the carnivores who would naturally be hunting them. They had like this weird zoo mentality where um, the, I believe it was the wise and old one, old female, she's trying to convince one of the gazelles or one of the herd animals to help her in getting out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's just kind of that strange, because I've heard that zoos have strange behavior in animals anyway, and just wondered if that kind of played into that at all. Well, <laughs> I'll jump in. Um, I think that the uh, the, the setting, uh, or how it's actually based on a true story, uh, actually, I made the mistake, uh, I'll admit it, of not reading the back of the book first, which... I think I even said last time to you guys, make sure we read the back of the book because we found that we miss key details about the story sometimes if it's on the back of the book first. But um, uh, I found out that you know that it was based on a, a true story uh, towards the end there, and um, that actually made it a lot more interesting for me. And I wish I had known that when I started reading the book uh, because it. it I don't know, I, I think I would have paid different attention to the story. Um, as it was, though, it, it was it was pretty good. I did like that um, somebody took a realistic story and turned it into a graphic novel like this, uh, humanizing the, the 
animals and giving uh, well a, a humanized story to it. I I did like that idea of it. I don't know about the execution, but I, I did really like the the whole thought of it. Worked out pretty well. So I did like the idea of it, um, but there was one moment in particular where I felt like um, human emotion about a particular circumstance was projected onto the lion pride and I was like really she, would she really felt that way because she's a lion or, or would she felt or are they projecting like how kind of a, some human like perspective onto that situation so um, but for the most part I really uh, I thought that it was kind of a I don't know. Uh, I don't want to say entertaining because a book about war is like it's tough to say that you're entertained by that. Um, but, but it was um, it was uh, you know just definitely kept my interest and I felt like it was a good read. Um, I have to say <laughs> I didn't read the back of the book either. Um, I didn't really. Uh, expect uh, well okay that's a different question um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I thought it was really interesting I started reading it and I immediately thought of we three and I would almost put the book back down again I uh, know how I feel about you know animals yeah. and bad things happening to them is that the one where and, the animals uh, are in like mech suits and stuff or yep oh yeah, yep, yeah. the one I refused to read it for one of the comic book groups. I, I made it two pages in and I said no. Yeah. <laughs> and I almost did that for this one too, but I was like, no, I'll just keep going and see what happens. Um, cause, yeah, I don't, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. So I was happy about that. But um, <laughs> no, I, I thought it was really important to show the, the war from their point of view. Yeah. Uh, I was expecting them actually to end up being like trapped there and have to turn on each other cuz I'm sure that help happened to some of those animals and you know people just kind of in war torn areas the animals get left behind and uh so it was an interesting point of view from a war from the zoo animals. Yeah, I I did like that quite a bit. Um it, it it gave you a fresh perspective, and I think that's probably what I liked most about it is the um, the idea that it wasn't just you know another war story about uh, like begged it not that not to say that you know the war stories aren't good or bad or whatever, but um, it just it was a uh, something totally different, and yeah, it it did kind of lend itself to a lot of Lion King uh, scenes there. I mean, I saw the monkeys, and I'm thinking actually. Uh, I wasn't thinking Lion King at that moment when the monkeys grabbed the cub. I was thinking uh, Jungle Book. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I, a lot of the artwork was similar in appearance and execution of the um, of Lion King. And I think that's kind of what brought uh, brought some appeal to it. Is you know that artwork was really cool. You, really, you did you find the artwork similar to? Like uh, a similar inspiration to it. I'm not saying it's the same or. No, no, no. I know. I, I guess I just felt. Like, I mean, I can see definitely like the the colors. You know, well, the general shapes are the same. Obviously, right? It's lions. Lions just... are a general shape. But I don't know. I I don't feel like the artwork was the same. I'd say the characters. <laughs> how, oh, how how the animals looked <laughs> would be would be what I was focusing on. Uh, strangely, I don't remember much about the environment that they were in. Uh, maybe a few key frames, but um, I was more focused on the characters throughout the entire novel. So I guess that's what I was referring to. Okay. Because I could, I could definitely see that the environment around it, no, not at all, uh, like The Lion King. But uh, the characters themselves, yeah, especially like the cub. <laughs> Do you yeah. think the writers were trying to educate the public in some way about anything to do with the war, or 
it was just a story. No, I felt like there was like um, some elements of kind of uh, uh, shining a light on you know, casualties other than human because I think there's a lot of like uh, you know casualties of war and they're not necessarily you know uh, humans who are injured or killed uh, there's a lot of like side effects that you don't think about and this is certainly one of them um, and you could also think about it from you know perspective of people's pets you know uh, equally I'm sure they are left behind and, and go through you know uh, horrible experiences as well um, so yes I think there was some some element of like let's shine a light on on the the other horrible things that happened during war um, and actually I felt like that was a little to the book's detriment to be honest hmm. did you see the last page on there where it talks about I did and there were other casualties as well yep yeah okay <laughs> sorry <laughs> uh, um do you guys mind if I jump in with the next question? No, go ahead. Sure. You don't want to add? Do you, do you have any thoughts on that question? Or, uh, or? Sorry, sorry, I guess I did just kind of sidetrack, didn't I? I just jumped right off of it. Um, yeah. <laughs> I guess not, not really. <laughs> you, you, you kind of said what I was thinking there, so it's, it's, I kind of felt the same way. Uh, Callisto, did you have anything to add to that? Uh, no, I'm curious what, why you thought that was the detriment to the book, but that's another question. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's all right. Um, well, I felt like it was, I actually felt like the, I know that it was the true story, but I, I did feel like the pace was sped up, um, and it almost felt like a little contrived. Um, mm -hmm. And it just felt like the message was being pushed a little too much instead of, and my, I don't know. So I was, what you were saying earlier about, you know, almost not reading this, I was actually really afraid to read this book because I'm like, you know, I, uh, I was really afraid of like the emotional impact of, of these, but really weirdly I had a really tough time becoming attached to any of the characters so by the end of the book I actually you know wasn't nearly as sad as I expected to be um, and spoiler alert by the way um, so and that was when I looked back at it and I kind of felt like okay so I wasn't really attached to these characters and, and you know why was I not as attached as I expected to be in it and thinking about it, it just felt like it was um, like uh, I don't know. There was a little too much message in there, and little too little, little too little, little too little character development. Mm -hmm. like I just, where I didn't like, I didn't particularly bond with any of them. Maybe it's because I obviously I can't relate to lions, but, <laughs> but, <laughs> but and I, I also I can't relate to you know somebody being stuck in the middle of war. Um, but um, but I was kind of hoping to find some some common thread that made me care a bit more about these characters than I actually ended up caring about them. So. I have to say I actually feel exactly the same way. I expected to be much more upset at the, when it ended. I wasn't expecting that. Um, but I was the the thing that impacted me the most was the other lion that they found yeah. Um, yeah. in their travels. Yeah, I totally agree. I felt more sorry for that lion than I did. For yeah, yeah. That had a much bigger impact on me than anything. Yeah. Yep. And then totally. the hints as to how that lion had lived his life was just very upsetting. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I was starting to wonder if it was going to be about like an animal abuse issue, uh, but then you know when when it got to the end, it was a lot more pronounced about what was going on. And obviously, you could tell that there was a war atmosphere, but um, I don't know the whole 
setting seemed to overflow the story, uh, which is understandable. I mean, a, a war was going on, so. Any input there, Lila? Oh. <laughs> well, I, I felt like they, they may have chosen this, because I guess they could have possibly done a true story of someone who had to leave their pet and then, you hmm. know, not knowing what happened to the pet. But I think part of choosing, like, zoo animals is that, like, there's zoos everywhere. So you would be able to identify with what a zoo animal is like and, you know, oh, that could be the animals that we see just at the, you know, zoo nearby. And that that was their attempt to try to get us to care more hmm. about it. But I, I agree with uh, Kashka and Callisto that I did not feel as sad as I thought I would at the end. Um, so I don't know if that was what they were going for. <laughs> uh, but apparently it was something that multiple people felt commonly, so <laughs> there, was, there was something there that, I don't know. Yeah. yeah that, I think Kashka kind of said it when uh, there wasn't enough involvement in the characters. Uh, I mean, the characters were unique enough that you could tell them apart easily, which is not always common in a graphic novel, but um, it, it seemed to, I don't know, None of the characters were likable to me. <laughs> really? Yeah. It's not that I didn't like them. You didn't like, like... No? Didn't like Ali, the little cop? No. No. Oh. No, he reminded, he reminded me of Simba in The Lion King, and, and I hated him when he was a cub, too. <laughs> he, was a, he was an annoying little brat, you know? He's like, I'm going to be king, you know? And then what was what I also didn't care for, which... I don't know, it was the whole idea of lions being king of the jungle and how that was uh, impressed upon people just in general. And they actually kind of pushed that envelope onto all of the characters as well, that you know the lion was supposed to be kind of the king, the boss. And uh, I, I didn't really care for that because it, it, it's so overdone, I guess, that it kind of drove me away from it a bit. Um, they seemed so, and I, I can't say that they should be different. I just feel weird about it, but um, that they were all very ignorant. Uh, I mean, the older one with the, the scarred eye, she's, she was very wise and probably the one that I liked the most. But um, I don't know. She seemed to live a difficult life. And I guess you could compare their lives to some of the people that lived in the city as well, how they might be sheltered in some ways and uh, lived horrible, difficult lives in others um, and were trying to make the best of the situation they were in. Uh, and then you just switch it over and impress it onto lions. But I don't know. It just kind of felt a bit like it's been done before. But then... If you haven't experienced a lot of like liony stories in the past, I could see how it would be a lot more appealing. I don't know. I feel like I'm kind of babbling now. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's tough to get away from that, like uh, drawing that comparison between the cub in this book and the cub in Lion King. Maybe um, you know Simba is just such a like prominent lion cub character that. He's just gonna. He's just gonna ruin everything from here on out. Thanks, Simba. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. I guess. Um, to use something that doesn't compare well whatsoever, uh, I'll say that I like kids in stories to be more like a Ghibli story, where they're smarter than people think. And they perform much more mature uh, things than are possible uh, in your average, you know, kid um, of that age or whatever. But uh, I don't know. I, I guess it, the kid was that way for a reason. So 
And that's how most cubs would be, very curious and full of themselves and feeling invincible because they're cubs and they don't know stuff yet. So I can't really hold it against it. It's just, I don't know. I felt like I was watching uh, or reading about the Lion King after they got put into a zoo. <laughs> <laughs> Lion King part two. <laughs> so yeah, my face just turned a bit red there. Hmm. Uh, anybody got any questions that they wanted to ask? Because I have completely forgotten mine at this point, and I need a moment to remember it. Okay, then I'm gonna ask what you guys, your opinion on the flashback for Safa, who is the oh. old. Did you feel like that was necessary? <laughs> oh. <laughs> basically, no. it, basically, it's like a rape scene for lions. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. That was the second thing that made me not want to read the book. Yeah. I was like, hmm. Hmm. Um, I'll say that... Did, so, did you feel like that brought value to the story? That's my question. I feel... That, that that made it more humanized in my mind. Yes, it may entirely be plausible in animal kingdom, whatever, um, but I feel that it was uh, just kind of drawing us into her character, a tiny bit of backstory, but it wasn't exactly the best for character development. <laughs> it, it made her appear uh, weaker than she, in my opinion, was. I think that she was a very strong character, uh, quite possibly the strongest of the bunch, just not physically. Um, and uh, I, don't, I, don't, I, I don't know, it just kind of a added a very depressing air to the entire story, even though it already was. I felt that it didn't need the extra push. Oh, obviously it was something important as to what it made her what she was, I guess. So, But me personally, I, I don't think that it was needed. She could have just made some other smaller implication as to difficulties she had before the zoo. My opinion. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, I thought it was... Um, well, I didn't really like that part, but... I thought what they were trying to convey, they could have done it in a different way. What they were trying to convey was that life on the outside was hard and that maybe it wasn't as bad being, that she didn't think it was as bad being in the zoo because she was at least, you know, safe. Right. That's kind of what I thought they were trying to convey. However, they didn't need to convey it in the way that they did. That seems to be a trope that a lot of, I'm assuming, I don't even know who's making these things, but I assume mostly men because that's what, who usually makes that stuff. But there's a lot of media out there, movies, TV, where the woman, the strong woman, is only ever strong after she's assaulted. Yeah. She's never strong because of other things. Like that's the thing that makes her tough and, which, you know, complete bull, but, you know, it, it's, it's a trope that is used in so many different things. Mm hmm. They, they could have done anything like, you know, her cub was, you know, killed or any, which is also a trope too, but mm -hmm. anything else, you know, just fighting between tribes, you know, man coming after her. Mm -hmm. I can think of many other things. <laughs> just anything else. <laughs> yep. Yep. It's one of my most annoyed, one of the tropes I'm most annoyed with. Hmm. How about you, Lilac? It's well. It was interesting you said man coming after her because there is a distinct lack of man in any sort of like physical form. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Always off, like to the side. Um, I I didn't exactly like that flashback, but I saw the purpose of it. Like she was the only one that had insight into freedom and like what it meant. And the, I don't know, it's like the grass is always greener, but 
she she kind of knew what it was like to have freedom, not necessarily in the context that they had it then, but she didn't like it necessarily, wanted things to stay the way they were, and I don't know, I feel like this was their way of describing what families feel like who are in these war zones, where they're not really making the choices that are causing these things to happen, and they just have to live with them, and everything is uncertain. Um, so it kind of... I don't know, it was like a story of people living like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. And that's where I was coming in with some of that like humanizing of the characters, how it kind of it could relate to uh, people trapped in the city zone. Um, you could impress a similar story over the human population, uh, minus <laughs> the zoo and animals, but you know... If you were to just take people instead, it could be put into similar circumstances. Hmm. No, I think that that's a really good point about the lack of humans in the story. Um, you know, I hadn't really thought about that as much before, but now that you say that, it does like, and where the humans are so anonymous in the story that it almost like relieves the responsibility. And maybe that's actually why I didn't quite feel as bad as I expected to because the violence is so like detached from you know any kind of hum human interaction. So that I think maybe that's part of what was missing was a little some you know like a responsible party. Um, you know, I feel. Like, if, perhaps if there was somebody to blame for all this horror that they were experiencing, I would have <laughs> felt for them a little bit more. But it was just so, like, uh, faceless that, uh, that it didn't, wasn't quite as meaningful for me. Maybe that was part of it. Um, but regarding the flashback, um, I totally see the purpose of it. And I appreciated, like, uh, I appreciated the, the need to to help me kind of relate to Safa um, and, uh, you know, give her some backstory as well. But, I, yeah, I just felt like, um, I felt like it was the easy option. Like, you know, um, like perhaps I, I would have appreciated like, um, like a bit more creative of a solution to that particular need. Um, but, but eh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I also felt like it was a human. That's the the scene that I was referring to earlier, where I said that I felt like they were projecting kind of human um, emotions and feeling on onto the lion, because that was definitely one of the ones where I was like, you know, really is this really like lion society? <laughs> 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 you know, <laughs> and it just felt like uh, I mean, it was so early in the book as well that it. It didn't set like the greatest tone for me for the rest of it, unfortunately. <laughs> Something has just occurred to me. Um, so Callisto and Kashka and I all felt, and I'm not sure, Valen, maybe you did too. Yeah, I had, all, I had agreed as well. The deaths were just kind of sad, but not like devastating. Yeah. Um, maybe that was the point. Yeah. Like to cheapen, like you see things on TV and oh, it's this, it kind of showing life is cheap when it mm -hmm. comes to war, and that's like the point. Because yeah. it seems weird that we would all feel the same way and that that would appear to make the story weak, but maybe that maybe yeah. it's, it's an interesting idea. Um, yeah, if that was the intention, it would have been good to kind of maybe bring it full circle so that you realize that without, you know, um, without a book club. Because <laughs> 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 I don't think, like, as an individual reader, I probably would not have caught that. So maybe maybe I'm just a bit dense, though. I don't know. <laughs> not particularly perceptive. Well, I have to say, underlying, you know. I, I don't think I quite follow what you guys are referring to when you're saying about this uh, cheapening it, if that was the intended effect. 
Well, yeah, maybe that's the point. If if so many people in our book club feel the same way about how the death was, maybe the book isn't weak as a result of not being devastating, but maybe that was the point. Hmm. Hmm. Sorry, I was laughing at the dog. <laughs> <laughs> not not at what you were saying. <laughs> Never work for children or animals. <laughs> <laughs> she says with two snoring pugs behind her. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not really yeah. sure what they were trying to convey at the end of that. I mean, other than I felt like they were trying to make you feel bad for them. But at the same time, I felt kind of okay because they finally saw the horizon. So they had a little glimpse of freedom. Mm -hmm. uh, um, no, they didn't because one of them was blind. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> 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 I, I, I felt that the entire book was kind of desperate and very sad and depressing. Um, and I, I mean, I guess I shouldn't have been surprised once I figured out that it was a war that was going on, but I, I, I felt there was this journey that was going on that was going to lead somewhere. Uh, I don't know. I, I have to admit, I didn't have much faith that they were going to escape and make it into the wild and live a happy life or something, but I was hoping that they would make it somewhere, at least out of the city, um, and then probably end up getting killed would make sense, but <laughs> poachers or something. Um, but I, I guess where I'm going with this is... Uh, it, I, I, I lost track of my thought again. I'm terrible. I, I am so scattered today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, I, guess, I guess the whole book uh, going south like that uh, I mean at the end with just a, a bunch of Americans running in and uh, shooting lions because well they there are a bunch of soldiers trying to you know take out bad guys in the city and they come across a bunch of lions well what do they do they shoot the lions um, it, it's like how pointless it was uh, uh, for them to leave, escape, live there. The whole thing, it's out of their control. Uh, and that they didn't really have a choice in the end. They made the best of what they could. But uh, do you feel that um, the whole th point of this uh, novel was to just kind of make the whole invasion kind of uh, pointless you know like uh, it, it didn't really have a good result in the end because of how fruitless the struggles were in the end there you I go see that. That, that's my deep question of the, of, of the year <laughs> well, I mean I, I kind of thought it was originally like in 2003 well I still think it but I mean at the time uh, you know I was very much against the whole thing and so I maybe that was what they were trying to get a, the point across as well was that it really they were trying to convey that in a different way that it was pointless that mm -hmm. there was there was no there was nothing that was resolved um, it's just, instead we've actually made it worse so uh, <laughs> um, yeah I can see they were trying to convey that kind of sense of uh, desperation that will never happen or something I'm not I didn't even, I can't even come up with the words I'm sorry well, that's futility. Right. Futility, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there was a word I just used multiple ones to make that how about you Kashka and Lilac I think that it definitely is a human story projected onto animals to make it more accessible um, more readership and things like that. I didn't necessarily bring it to a more global look like you guys have, and actually now that I'm thinking about it, it's making more sense. <laughs> how it was. So, yeah, I can see it now. <laughs> it's kind of broadening my view of the story as a whole. But in general, I, I definitely think it's a human story put onto animals. Well, here's here's another thought then. Do you think that it the the book 
would have been as well received as it was if it wasn't about lions and it was actually about the people that lived in the city. Well, that's what I was wondering. I think the readership would be lower. I like there are stories like that, uh, Arab of the future, Persepolis, things like that. But having it in this form by these people, I think broadened its appeal. Yeah, yeah. Which, Which is, is a good thing and a bad thing, in my mind. The fact that they would have to do that in order to broaden its appeal is kind of sad. But if it received more reception, then good on them. <laughs> All right. Was that a puppy? <laughs> puppy shape. Maybe. Maybe. So, did you have anything? Me? Mm -hmm. I already asked my question. Oh, that's right. Sorry. About flashback. Um, what did you guys think of the art? I mean, that's the question we always ask writers about. That is true. The quality of the art. Nico, Henriksen, and... Well, Did since I see everybody diving into the book to look at the art real quick, I, I will jump in and say... Um, the characters, I thought, were done really well. I mean, yes, they did resemble like the Lion King-esque type uh, characters, but they were very uh, realistically presented, uh, plus the fact that they were humanized. I mean, some, at one point you saw a lion do this, like, oh my gosh, in frustration, while he, the rest of his body was on the ground flat. And I was like, eh, that looked a bit out of out of sorts <laughs> but then but other times the you know like when they had the, the, the bear, bear just standing up and it had the curled lip it, it was really impressive uh, I thought that was really well done it, it looked big it looked scary and it looked real and uh, but it was also kind of a uh, done in the same style as the rest of the book so <laughs> I can hear Lulu snoring sorry so uh but I thought that it was it was done really well. The um, the general background stuff was done in a slightly more muted though, and I think that's done purposefully to try and phase that out a little. At times it did stand out though, like the two giant swords that were um, at the entrance to the zoo. I think it was. Uh, those were cool, and, and uh, like I said, all the characters were done really well. Like the sea turtle was was awesome. I loved the sea turtle. Um, yeah. It's probably my favorite probably. character in the whole book. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, there you go. There's, there's my thoughts on the art. It, it was it was done really well. And I think that's what actually brought me my interest into the book because I had seen some images of it a while in the past, and I had looked at this uh, and thought about it myself. So I, I'm glad it was brought to the table. Anyone else? <laughs> so there is, a, there is an awful lot of yellow and orange in this book. Yes. I, I, yes. I, I love the, the colorization of the book. It's fantastic. Um, the musculature on the animals is really good. I think animals are so difficult to get the proportions right as well. Um, you know, and I had no issue with proportions. Um, I actually... Uh, appreciated uh, the physical distinction <laughs> between Safa and the other female, what's her name, Nu, is it Nu, is that what, um, sorry, other female lion, I, I forget your name, <laughs> I it was N-O-O -O something, I just can't remember. N-O-R. N-O-R, okay. Um, Noor. But, uh, yeah, it's, I, I can't, I cannot fault the art at all. I love the light inside the buildings. Um, the landscapes, yeah, it's all really good. Hold it up. But holy moly, there's a lot of orange and yellow. <laughs> <laughs> I really like the, oh, these horses. I love um, you know, the the horses. Yeah. Are oh, yeah. So good. Or the the donkey when they. Oh scared. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Well, actually, I lied. There is one frame that has humans in it yeah back up see the oh yeah right, right. There. Well, no I, on the on the last page i thought you saw some um, yeah Maybe on the, the second to last page oh, hold on, see, on. Some you don't 
You don't see them until they're dead. Yeah. 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 Yep. And you see one dead human. Oh yeah, was there a dead yes, human? Yes, you do see the yeah, that's you. The oh. first, sorry, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, when they first kind of enter the city proper, um, they come across a young dead, that's a right. dead young man. I think it is. That's right. I forgot about that. Who they consider eating. Yeah. It's really interesting, actually, to me. And this is perhaps like another humanization part of it. I don't, I mean, do you think lions would really think twice about if they were hungry? Yeah. I don't think they're going to be like, I have a conscience about this because it looks like my keeper. I think they're just going to be like, nom, nom, nom. <laughs> you know? Well, I expect my dogs to nom on me. Although, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> But it does go back to what um, Lilac was saying earlier about, you know, behavior changes in zoo animals. So maybe that's kind of part of what they were trying to portray. But I just felt like it was, like, done a little too much. Like, really, I kind of felt like, actually, the turtle would have been up for grabs. <laughs> but, but maybe that's just me. Well, to be fair, I, I don't think that they were really starving. I think that they were just... You know, probably a bit hungry because they had most likely eaten the day before. I mean, they had just they had their their lunch brought to them, so that probably implied that they had uh, breakfast before the novel started. So I think that's the disconnect with the book because in the end it says the starving animals were eventually shot and killed by the U.S. soldiers. So it implies that they were wandering for quite some time without any food, but the book just makes it seem like it's been like an hour. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's where I felt like it was sped up too much, you know, like uh, some, perhaps a little portrayal of some passage of time would have been, you know, really beneficial. <laughs> Them trying to find food would have been, and not just like coming across things and deciding not to eat them, but I mean, yeah. seriously going out and trying to find <laughs> food. Right, right. Yeah. So what so, did uh, you two guys think about uh, the artwork? I liked it. Um, there wasn't a lot of um, variation in color, yeah. <laughs> like Kasha said. Um, it was all very yellow, and the only part that really stood out color-wise was when they got to the um, the horrible place with the bear. Um, yeah, look at that. I don't even want to look at that again. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's the only place where they did something that was not yellow or orange or light green. Mm -hmm. um, it was dark and horrible and everything was like black and gray and like yeah. you knew the minute you walked in there that this was a bad place. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Lilac? I see. And then the red. Red at the end. Oh, yeah. What was it? Like, that was pretty foreboding. Oh, like when they look at the horizon. Uh, the horizon. Yeah. 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 So, I, I don't know. It was like it was light and, you know, yellow mm -hmm. and stuff. And then they go through that dark time, like the shadow of evil. They fight that, get back to the yellow, and then red. <laughs> and then it goes dark. <laughs> at the end with the soldiers. Um, but I, I mean, I think the artwork was done well, personally. Mm -hmm. uh, I won't say it was outstanding, but it, it was definitely good. Um, I think it helped portray the messages that were happening in the book. Characters were easily visible and identifiable. Um, I know we've had times before where we've been like, I can't tell which person is which because they're so sloppily drawn. And I think they did good in this one. Um, so yeah. So. The ultimate question. Did you like it and would you recommend it? Uh, I would recommend it because I think it was a good book. Did I like it? Mm. Probably <laughs> not. And it has nothing to do with the book itself as much as that uh, anything that has horrible things done to animals I tend to really dislike. 
immensely. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I don't like people. I just, you know, it's it's anything anything bad that happens to children, old people, or animals, pretty much. You know, the the vulnerable people. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I like uh, a C. I liked it. Uh, I think it would take a very specific person that I would recommend it to. Hmm. Very good point. Just because of the like the message and if they would have an interest or not. All right, Kashka. Um, I'm a bit on the fence. Uh, I think the book. I think it has value. Definitely. Um, I'm trying to think of like, but I think I'm with Lilac. Like, um, I think it would have to be kind of a specific person to recommend it to, um, because it's it is um, kind of difficult subject matter. Um, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, myself, I'd have to say. Um, I would recommend it to specific people that I think might enjoy it. Uh, personally, I don't think it was quite my style. I do enjoy um, some books that are similar to this, you know, like Persepolis and so on. You know, I don't know that it's really that uh, close to this, but um, I don't know. I, f I feel like it has some relative material, uh, but overall, I like to walk away from a book going, that was cool, or I really enjoyed that, or walk away with some kind of positive feeling on it. Um, sometimes a sad feeling is okay, provided that it's only like a one time every so often in a series. It doesn't last more than two yeah. minutes. Yeah. Uh, I, I can think of several series that I really enjoyed, and then there was like this sad moment or a really intense moment, and I was like, oh no, I want to know what happens in the next one. They can't be dead or something, you know. But in this one, I just got this constant foreboding and bad feeling. By the time I finished the book, I felt like an evil and bad human being. Um, <laughs> and because of that, I... I I guess I would edge towards not caring for the book, only because I didn't feel too good after I was done reading it. But I'm not going to say it was a bad book. Uh, I'm going to say that there are plenty of people out there that probably will like this and uh, get a lot more from it than uh, I did. Um, so I encourage you to give it a try. I have, an, I have another question. Yeah. Have you guys read any other books or graphic novels where animals were the main characters? And so, uh, you know, um, yeah, it's depicting, depicted from an animal's perspective. Uh, does Nightcrawler from the X Men count? <laughs> <laughs> Negative. Um, I don't think so. I mean, obviously, I read the first two pages of E3, but um, I the I, only movies. You know, like The Secret of Nim and stuff like that. I don't think I've read a graphic novel that way. Yeah, I have to think. I think I'm about the same. I've seen plenty in animation um, or movies, film, and so on. Uh, but I, I don't think I've seen anything in a graphic novel form that I've read prior to this from memory. <laughs> Not to say that I haven't. I just don't recall. Oh. Well, unless you call count like... DuckTales or Uncle Scrooge and Donald Duck comics, but I don't think those count either because they're closer, they're more humanoids than they are animals with human characteristics. <laughs> what about the um, the one uh, about the boy that had diabetes? They portrayed the rat mm -hmm. with the um, mm -hmm. view, and actually now that I'm thinking about it, Mouse Guard. Yep. Oh, you're right. Well. Yeah, I totally forgot about Mouse Guard. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I take it back. Like I said, that's why I gave the caveat of from memory, <laughs> of which mine is poor. Joe the Barbarian, that was the name of it. Yes, right? Joe the Barbarian, yep. Which we reviewed on this. Mm -hmm. Yes, we did. Um, 
So what was the... Well, that was my question. I mean, I guess, uh, how do you think this... Com I, mean, I know, obviously, the stories are very different, right? but how do you think this compares to to other, you know, um, graphic novels or books? Because I was I was also thinking about Watership Down or... Um, Redwall. I think Red Redwall. Or there was another book by Richard Adams as well called... Um, Wind in the Willows is another oh, one. Oh, yeah, Wind in the Willows. Um, I think Plague Dogs is the other one by Richard Adams that I'm thinking of. Um, and those are... Uh, Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe. Mm, yeah. You have the Beaver yeah. and Aslan and yeah. Well, I don't. Here's the thing, though, is that I, I don't think that this actually does compare. I think this contrasts uh, with all those other styles because the other styles were animal in look, but human in everything else. Uh, and this, I think, is the opposite. It's uh, they were animal or more animal in how they were acting. They were trying to portray animals in this situation, whereas all the other ones were like animals with weapons in, in hands instead of uh, paws. You know, uh, uh, Obviously, Aslan was an actual walking lion, but for all other purposes, he just didn't have the digits on his hand. He was a human. He was as smart or smarter than a human, and so on. I agree with you, except for Watership Down, and, and, or uh, except for Richard Adams, actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Watership Down and Plague Dog, I think. Um, or no, actually, maybe even just Watership Down. That's, when I was thinking about like books where they've done, you know, the author has done a fantastic job, whether it be like a graphic novel or you know, a written book. Um, the Watership Down is the one that comes to mind where. Those rabbits are really rabbits for me. Yeah, yeah. I, actually, I will agree. I, I was incorrect in my entirety. Uh, so. <laughs> no, 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 no. no, but no. I, I totally by, agree with you. Like, by, I think by, mouse guard, please. mouse guard, or you know, the humans in nice form. Yeah. Um, and I think Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe are pretty yeah. much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Joe the Barbarian, I felt like they were kind of humans in animal form as well. I would like to see, like, um... But yeah, yeah. Water Maybe Shutdown, down. very depressing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I cry every time, every single time. It's like, <laughs> box of tissues required. Um, I would actually really like to see, and maybe it's already, I'm sure it's already out there and I just don't know about it, um, but uh, from like Bird's perspective, that would be quite cool. Oh, I've seen that. Uh, it was Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds. <laughs> they win. <laughs> Bird Society. That would be cool. <laughs> Uh, I've got the seagull on the Little Mermaid. <laughs> well, what Can we just exclude Disney movies? <laughs> about uh, Charlotte's Web. Oh, that's a great oh, one. That, yeah. Is that going from the animal to human, or hu starting as human becoming animal? I think I think their personalities are more animal-like. Uh, once again, I think yeah. they're. They're closer to like the Watership Down type as well as, you know, Pride of Baghdad where they're more animal and they just have human voices. Mm. Oh, hello, kitty cat. <laughs> it's going to be, I have, I have a new mission now. I need to go find a graphic novel from a bird society perspective. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear. What that would be like. Okay. Hi. Cool. All right. Well, that was my last question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I really, it's in the perspective that I really like, though. I, you know, I know this was difficult subject matter, but I do like, um, like I really love mouse cards. Um, mm. uh, yeah, and Watership Down, although it's incredibly sad. But Red Wall, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Secret of Min. By the way, I was looking at mousy stuff recently for that particular reason, and <laughs> I didn't realize that Nim 
is an acronym for the National Institute of Mental Health. Really? And the Secret of NIM is actually based on a novel where um, some of the mice are being experimented on. So. Really? I think that's what I got. Yeah. <laughs> but the acronym well, is definitely like that, National Institute That, that is Mental. the story, so yeah. Yeah, I knew that they, you know, part of the story is that they're being experimented on and that's, you know, the rats are super smart and the the mouse that's the husband that died was as well. But no, I never really thought about the the acronym. But I haven't seen it for a really long time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, it, I think I've seen it 50 times, but yeah. that was long ago. It's a good film. <laughs> There you go. You're a bit of useless trivia for the day. <laughs> Actually, I would say that uh, the secret of NIM is where the two worlds collide. Where you've got human animals and animals with human voices. Because those that have been experimented on tend to be more human-like. Those that are uh, with them, like Mrs. Brisby, was also more human-like because she was familiar with her husband who was experimented on. But then they had others like Jeremy the Crow who was just this total goofball of a crow that had no sense in his head short of, I just want to gather string, you know. So some of the characters were smarter than others, uh, more human-like, but then they did have some just kind of really animal intelligence creatures out there. I don't know. Maybe. Like I said, it, sometimes it applied, sometimes it didn't. Depended on the character. <laughs> so, uh, anybody got anything else before we draw this to a close? All right. Well then, uh, thanks everybody for coming. Uh, next time, we're going to be reviewing Bird Boy. Uh, this. Speaking of birds. Yes. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, wish granted. It might satisfy what I'm looking for. <laughs> uh, this was picked by Callisto. Uh, this was a recent webcomic that uh, has uh, very recently gone to print form. And uh, we're, very all, we're all very happy to uh, get this. And we'll look forward to discussing it next time. So till then, folks, uh, we'll all see you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.